welcome to the clean truth, where we like to call bullshit on the status quo. What is up? Welcome back to the clean truth. I'm Don. The weekly episode of Bust Ben's Balls. Man, I just looked at a second ago and I don't have anything I can bust your balls about. Clean hat, Not squat today. over shirt. You know who we can though? Scott has those Star Wars shoes. shoes. What are we going to do about these? He's, he's trying to wear them so frequently that they become like second nature for us and we don't notice them every day when he comes to the office. Do you know what they remind me of? Do you remember the checker shoes? Yep. Remember like checker? That's what they remind me of. What do you think? We got a, we got a guest on the show today. Let's see what he thinks. Yeah, I know. But before we do that, our fake sponsor is Monster Energy again. Mm-hmm. Shout That's out awesome. to... Uh, Brett Bauer is her name. Yes, ma'am. Brett keeps us pretty hydrated here at the office. So, Brett, thank you. She takes care of us. Yeah. All right, special guest this week, Ryan Jeffers from the Minnesota Twins. How you How's doing, it going? Man? Doing good. Doing really good. So, Ryan played baseball here at UNCW, and you were his strength coach, right? All right, two years. Two years, yep, two years. So, w- did you grow up here? Are you from Wilmington? From Raleigh. From Raleigh. Uh, yeah, I grew up in Raleigh, then moved down here for school. Cool. And you played all four years at UNCW. No three. Transfer, three years? Three. Yeah, so I got drafted after my junior year in 18. I was a freshman 15 and then drafted in 18. Okay. How was it playing baseball here? It was pretty awesome. You know, I uh, I actually was a walk-on, a uh, preferred walk-on. So I didn't – I had a, I had a couple offers coming out of high school for different schools, but I, I knew this place would kind of be the best for me to, like, follow my dreams. I mean, I want, my dream was to play pro ball. And I knew that this place was going to set me up the best for that. Um, so I took the chance and came here with, with no scholarship and worked my butt off and earned that spot to and just continue to get better and then ended up getting drafted 2018. So, Why do you think that is? I've heard other guys say that they purposely came to play baseball here. And you think, like, you know, UNCW is not a – in a power five division, but I've heard other baseball players say that. Like well, on the team, I've I think uh, the stuff. I think young kids in North Carolina, like coming out of like high school, who truly understand like that baseball in college is more so than just like a name across your chest. I think they, especially if you go back to like the Mark Scaff era, have seen like track record at UNCW and have seen um, development that. Just because it's Player not the yeah, maybe it's not just the the biggest league and the shiniest like fans every day. They've seen that the development actually either a pays off or b like is just there differently than other places. Yeah, a lot of the, a lot of the bigger schools too coming out of high school they over recruit like crazy. Um, they have they bring in fifty kids on their roster in the fall ball. And you have to cut it down to thirty five. Um, a lot of kids get get screwed over it going to the UNC's NC States like schools like that um, and guys that are kind of caught in the middle you can come down to a, a level a different level of baseball it's not an ACC baseball you're still playing top tier baseball in the country um, but really dig into the development side um, the coaches here have an unbelievable relationship with all the professional scouts um, and the professional scouts really trust the UNCW coaches which is big when it comes down to draft time and you can look at the people we have drafted Versus the people at NC State, UNC, all those bigger schools, and we we get drafted just the same as as they sure. do. Um, and you can look at that and say, hey, like I might be able to get playing time earlier in my career going to UNCW, and then just develop from there. Yeah, a place we're at UNCW, and we're going down a wormhole, just jumping right <laughs> into this like topic yeah. today. But like, a place like UNCW doesn't have the same scholarship um, capabilities that a place like UNC or NC State. Mm -hmm. we're talking like North Carolina, like state system. So like to Ryan's point, they don't have to worry about like our, our money guys in a sense, you know, getting playing time because they're supposed to play. Like we, we recruited them. We gave them money. They're supposed to play. Right. It's UNCW. It's more of like everybody gets a little bit. (laughs) We kind of see what happens. And so do you know how baseball, like 11.7 scholarships for the whole team. So you have 35 men in your roster, 27 of them can have a scholarship and there's 11.7 full scholarships to go around for everybody. And that's for, like, the big-time schools. Like, we can't afford at UNCW to have 11.7 scholarships. I don't I don't know how many we have. I don't it's know if the, you know. I think it's nine Probably or like ten. Nine yeah, or something. it's close-ish. But, but still, you have to divvy that up. Like, there's very rare. The money's divvied up. Right. Yeah. There's very rare that anyone has a, a full ride. Um, if you do see someone, I mean, I'd say the average is probably 25 to 50%, somewhere in that range. Yeah. Scholarship. Um, 
the guys that get 100 percent are guys that they're really trying to get from high school that probably you're going to get drafted and might need financial support right. just to even go to school yeah has that ever happened at uncw i've never heard of that like a full ride eric jenkins i don't know if you knew that name he's from actually down here he had a full ride ended up getting drafted by the rangers in the first or second round i think took it didn't go to didn't come here um hmm. but you got to give those out to tr- to try and get kids right. like that to come man i mean i know from me personally moving from st louis and being around that baseball city coming here, UNCW saved me, <laughs> you know, being able to enjoy the mm-hmm. game. And then, you know, meeting Ben and being around the the team and the coaching staff there and getting mm-hmm. to know the coaches from coming into the restaurant and everything. It's been awesome for me to see guys like you and other guys in the last couple of years come up through that school and through that system and then to see them on TV and watch them play pro ball, man. I'm just like awed by it. I'm like, that is, that's fucking awesome. That's great. Yeah. It was kind of it was a crazy. I mean, coming in as that walk on, you know, that was my my goal, dream though, to get to the MLB. Like that's every kid who play baseball. If you sure. don't have that dream, like why are you playing the game? But I mean, just it just happened so fast between the draft and going through the minors and then making my debut this year. It was it was wild. It's pretty cool. Like uh, you know, we go back to you and I meeting like two and a half, almost three years ago now. But Ryan's first year of like truly getting a lot of playing time was your first year, like diving super deep into like helping support the mm-hmm. uh, the baseball team here. So it's just kind of it's kind of funny. That's why you like brought him on the show today. But uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it seems like Absolutely. forever ago, but it really wasn't in a sense. So no, it was. I mean, 2018 it was almost what two years ago. Yep, two oh, and a half years cool. ago. I know one of the things I'm curious before we, we before we move on from college ball. What is, you know, we were talking a little bit right here before we started recording about some of the differences from the strength staff that's in the big leagues now versus Mm -hmm. this guy here. Yeah, no, um, it's, it depends on the organization. Um, Some orgs kind of are just like, do you? Like, and a lot of times those are the orgs that get really bad reps, kind of a bad player development system. Um, In the minors, we have a pretty structured, like, a pretty structured program. Um, it's very Cressy based. Um, all of our, all of our strength coaches have a pretty much interned or did something at Cressy. Um, what is Cressy? Eric Cressy. Eric Cressy is down in, F- go ahead. Yeah. You know, you probably know more about him than yeah. Him. Eric Cressy. He started in Ohio, I believe actually, um, with a private facility, um, early, early on, uh, didn't go into the collegiate or the professional side of, uh, strength and conditioning and found a niche, training minor league and Mm -hmm. high school and professional baseball players um became had a success maybe it's boston actually he started in boston boston sorry not ohio um and had a successful business model um decided to take a leap of faith go down towards like the jupiter florida area where spring training was exploding Mm -hmm. um opened a second facility just not a very like just a well-rounded guy not not overly like boasting about Hey, these are my guys. I have these many pros under me kind of thing like that. He's never been that. So that in a sense has given him a good reputation of, Hey, I'm here to help people and, um, develop them. So he's grown a tree of people that have come to work for him and he doesn't have anything like that's rocket science, but it's baseball specific as much as Mm -hmm. you can be. And at a time when there wasn't much of that, he was the first one to really dive into that. Yeah. He kind of cornered the market and kind of everyone came kind of branched off of him that is now baseball specific like you kind of everyone who's a baseball specific weight coach is had knows Cressy um he's he kind of has the, the program where you can as a high school or pro guy you can go down to one of his facilities and train there for three or four weeks and he'll write you a program do all that um he's the Louis Simmons of baseball yeah in a sense I mean he just cared I mean it's simple as enough is like he just cared about baseball guys mm-hmm. because it was a world where you had football strength and conditioning and you had you know powerlifting, bodybuilders mm-hmm. like you know weightlifting well nobody realized how important a baseball player from a strength and conditioning standpoint was and he got in there at the right time right time uh, mm-hmm. right time right place um found success with some you know people yeah. that you know were successful and you know it's just it's just grown from there it's so, such yeah. a niche baseball train it's such a niche mm-hmm. kind of thing because there's such specific movements that 
you can do, you stay away from. And he's kind of been the one that's been on the forefront of like development as well. Like really trying to push the, the baseball training forward in the sense of technology or whatever you want to, whatever you want to call it. But uh, he ended up actually this year taking a job with the Yankees as like their strength and conditioning performance head. Um, he didn't give up any of his, his training centers down right. in Florida or Boston, but he's kind of took over the Yankees. They've been plagued with injuries for who knows how many years. So they kind of cleaned house on their performance athletic training side this past off season and brought him in to take over that whole aspect of their team. That's awesome. I know one of the, probably the coolest thing for me to see um, up close and personal is I never realized like, I mean, maybe this happens at all the schools, but like, some of the pro guys, they come back every year in their off season and train. Yeah. And then I know right before you came here, you were still working with a lot of those guys and training them in the off season. Yeah, some of them still come really to my cool. house. Some of them still come to my house this off yeah. season. There's yeah. a lot, a lot, especially down here too. Um, there's a lot of guys that just that come back to Wilmington. They like the city itself, but what the UNCW's done a good job of of wanting us around. Um, I mean, they they make it available for us to come out to work out there to to use the facilities because they want us around. They want us around those college sure. kids to, yeah. to talk with them, have conversations, especially during camps and stuff like that. Absolutely. Um, so that's why, I mean, me and my wife are looking for a house down here. Like we want to be down here for a extended period of time just cause we got everything here. Like this is where I need to be to excel my, my career. Is that pretty common college ball? A little bit. Like sometimes, uh, you know, like when I was in Mississippi and then Kansas, it's completely different. So like, you know, those guys are coming from all over the country, different places, mm-hmm. and those are kind of like destination college towns. Well, again, that's why like Wilmington and UNCW have such a bang for the buck because you're happy wife, happy life. Right. And you have yeah. a place to train. Beach, and, baby. And the climate is yeah. is pretty damn nice. Right. Like, there's a reason why that guy left Boston yeah. to open a facility in South it's, Florida. It's so. easy to like want to come back here. Like, yeah. it's some places that you're like, maybe it's not like where I want to settle down. Like, and for you to want to settle down, you have to obviously like the city, you got to like the, the area, the beach, like, so it's good. I mean, you and has got it, got it going well. Well, I mean, I haven't seen too many other, you know, D one schools and their facilities and their, their weight rooms and their indoor facilities. But I mean, you throw the beach right next to UNCW with the facilities that they have now, man, that's, yeah, it's pretty sweet. It's, it's pretty com- tight. Completely different for Brian to be able to go hit mm-hmm. for an hour and a half and then go take his dog out to the beach and relax and yeah, uh, absolutely. Enjoy, and truly enjoy an off season. So there's something to be said about that. Absolutely. You can get you get the best but like you got everything that you can go bust your ass and, and get after it in the gym, in the weight or in the like the cages, and then you can go, like you said, chill on the beach, <laughs> throw a beach chair down. So you were drafted by the Minnesota Twins in eighteen. Mm-hmm. Talk about how that was. Like that that's I see guys, I see it on video. I see how guys deal with that day. Yeah. That's probably like a, like you said, every little kid's dream, but walk me through that day. How was that? It was. Go? So it was actually, we actually were in the regional still. Um, we were in East Carolina. We were at ECU. We played that morning because we had gotten rained out. Weren't you there? Um, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Because I remember watching it. We gotten rained out the Sunday before and it was, ended up getting pushed back to Monday, which is the first day of the draft. Um, so we had like a noon game or something. We ended up losing. It was a crazy roller coaster of emotions because I'm my col- I know my college career is ending. Like I know I'm leaving. Um, I knew I was going to get drafted in the top four rounds. Um, so finishing that game, it was just a you're like this is, you know your career your career here is done. Um, so you say say bye, say thanks to everybody. Um, you take the bus home, and then we got home at like probably six or something back to the apartment. And me and my wife, it was then my fiance or. I don't know what she was back then. Probably girlfriend. She might have been um, girlfriend, bro. She might have been girlfriend. I think it was girlfriend. <laughs> I think she was still You better girlfriend. hope she don't listen to this. <laughs> I think she's wow. girlfriend. Still I, girlfriend. For, yeah. Because, um, yeah, I proposed You're after trouble, the draft. <laughs> um, but uh, we 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 decided not to watch the draft. Um, it's, I just kind of waited by my phone, kept my phone near me, like had it on me. My agent ended up calling me, said, hey, the twins – Twins want to take you here. They're gonna take you under slot. Are you cool? Like, are you cool with this number? I said, absolutely. Like, let's do it. And that was kind of the story. Like, it was. It's kind of a rush of emotions. It's kind of. Um, it hit hit me so fast. Like, 
you knew it was coming. I wasn't sure if it was going to be on day one because day one is rounds one and two. And then day two is three through ten. Um, so I wasn't sure if it was going to be early early day two or day one. Um, so it ended up being day one, and it was – you get that call. You start making your phone calls, your family, your friends, yeah. and, and then just trying to figure out what do you do next, when you, where you go, what you do, and it was wild. So what did you do next? Like what was the next step after draft day? Like <laughs> – so we ended up, I actually, I'm curious. I, I got drafted on Monday and they ended up flying me up to Minneapolis on Thursday, um, to do physicals, do all that stuff. Um, and then once all that clears Friday, I signed my contract and then they shipped me down to Florida on Saturday. I Pensacola, spent a week, Pensacola, right? Fort Myers, Fort for Myers spring training, for spring training um, yeah. spent a week down there doing like a mini camp. They had all the draft guys come down yeah. and do like little workouts and, in, like an inner squad or two and then we actually had to bus up to elizabeth in tennessee 14 hours through the night Ugh. to go to our rookie ball team um, that was like welcome to pro ball hop on a bus and go for 14 hours through the night um it was they ended up actually we were the last, i think we were the last year to do that because it was just such a miserable miserable trip um but then i played there for 26 games and then went up to iowa and played the rest of the year up in single A ball. That's awesome, man. That's pretty. That's so cool to see where it starts and then mm -hmm. to go through that. And you only played in Iowa. You were only there a short period of time, right? Yeah. So that first year, you're only there for less than half the season. So I played like a month in rookie ball, and then up for like a month and a half in in single A. That was low A at the at the time. I think I'm not sure. I think it's next year that they're going to cut back a ton of minor league teams. Um. But I was there for, yeah, a month and a half, and then back home to just for the off season. And then how do you, like, everybody talks about getting the call. Mm -hmm. How did that go? Yeah, um, we, were, we were watching the game up in St. Paul because I was over at the alternate site, like, doing stuff, um, staying busy. We were watching all the – me and my wife were watching the game, um, the Twins game, and saw the catcher kind of go down and come out of the game with an injury. Um, and we knew, like, I was, like, I stayed by my phone. Like, I knew I was kind of next in line. If it was going to be somewhat where he was going to actually have to go on the, the DL, like, I was going to get the call. Stayed by the phone. And then I think it was, like, 1130 at night, I ended up getting the call from our minor league form director. And he said, hey, you're, uh, pack your bags. You're going up to the big leagues. Like, you gotta, you're going on a 10-day road trip. And uh, have fun. Like, go enjoy it. And that was that. We were kind of – the emotions really didn't hit for – a week or so because it was just so like you're going i was starting the game the next day we played one home game we played the brewers that next day um you started so, that game that next yeah game? so i got called up i got called up i don't remember if it was thursday or friday but i ended up playing that game the next day um i didn't really the that. first game back yep my first game up i was starting behind the plate um ended up getting two hits and yeah first that. rbi all that <laughs> stuff um and then um, then we were leaving that night it was a ground ball right like through the yeah, yeah. The six hole um hey, hey. counts you know <laughs> take it. Um, a hit. <laughs> and if as long as you keep it in the ballpark yeah um, you get the ball back because if it goes outside the ballpark you can't like get it authenticated and all that stuff so just keep it keep your first one in the ballpark um but then we were going on the road for to kansas city cleveland and detroit for for 10 days right after that so i had to pack all my stuff and we hopped right in the plane and, and headed out and ended up starting like I think nine out of the next 12 games or something. As soon as I got called up, um, it was awesome. Like going right up there and getting play time right away. Not only that, but you were crushing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it was, I mean, I started, I started probably those first, that first like 10 or 12 games. I was just single, single, single. Didn't, I was like feeling for that first extra base hit. Um, and then once we came back home, we were playing the Tigers. And I hit, launched that first home run and it kind of like settled everything out and opened up the the gates for me just to to start elevating a little more and just feel more comfortable up there and then the next couple came rolling and it was it was going really good did you get haze in the dugout after that first one they ignore you or no not a, not a ton <laughs> um it's it's there's not a ton of that now um the a lot of those the older guys are kind of like i don't we don't like it when it happened to us and they kind of keep it out of it they uh Really, I think it's kind of funny. It was. I like. I like it when they do when that happens and they all the, just ignore them. And then they're like, "Oh no, I'll just kidding. jump on them." <laughs> that uh, that still ha that still happens. That's like that'll happen for someone who's been in a slump for a while and they hit their first home run and we're just kind of ignore them. Like, cool. But um, 
it was cool. It was cool to kind of all the guys like shaking your hand in the dugout, like congratulations. Like, yeah. Um, yeah, it was, it was crazy. How was, um, I think we were talking about this with somebody else. I can't remember who it was, but talk about playing this year with the whole COVID. Yeah. We were talking to Mike pandemic. Oh yeah. Um, Myers. Oh yeah, yeah. Like the difference with no fans and then yep. going to other ballparks with no fans. That's, had to be weird. Yeah, it's weird. You know, I don't – from coming through minors, I mean, I'm used to playing in front of crowds of 100 people. Um, but, like, when you play in the big leagues, you're expecting to have 40,000 people in the stands. Um, it was weird. You know, I don't – I didn't have a – it kind of got normal by the end, like, playing in front of nobody. Like, we're going out there just focusing on the game. And I think it, in the end it really did help me get be able to have, get more comfortable quick. Um because I didn't have – it was one last thing I had to focus on when I got called up. Like, I didn't have 40,000 people screaming at me my first A-B or, like – Your parents even, parents in the stands. Right, like, there was like, nothing yeah, – none of that. Like, it was just me and the me and the game. Like, I didn't yeah. have to focus on anything else. Um, but it was weird. Like, you you want those fans. Like, you want you want that energy. The pitcher said it was it was really hard for them to get that, like, extra level of, of adrenaline going just because there's – the pitchers feed off that. And for position players, we're able to kind of just – zone in on the mound but that's they, what i read i read a lot of guys talking about how much easier it is to time you like for hitters it, for excuse me for hitters it was a lot easier to get used to because it they can hear <laughs> right like we were pitchers feed off that noise for us yeah. position, i mean for us hitters like we just kind of we block it out and when there's nothing we really don't you don't have to even block out anything like they piped in the the mlb the show crowd noise into all the stadiums um but that's just kind of like white noise, right? It, like, it was. I mean, you at first, the first time you hear it, you're like, this is so weird. You're looking around, not seeing anybody, but it like sounds Twilight like there's zone. a full crowd in the stands. Um, and they, some teams, some teams used it really well. Some teams just were brutal at like using the volume knob and others. Um, wow. So, cause like, yeah, some, like we, our, our scoreboard people were really good at like turning it up at, at moments where a crowd would get loud. Um, and like the Tigers, just awful at, manipulating the noise <laughs> just blasting it <laughs> yeah just either blasting it or like just having it like super soft in the background where it's just like a murmur um it was weird and then all the testing protocols we got tested twice a day or twice a week or every other day every two days um it was kind of a rolling test like we would get them back we would get tested again we get them back and we did a really good job yeah i mean not only on the field but off the field your entire routine is completely different mm-hmm. I think I think it really impacted the veteran guys, the guys that have been around, been in the game for so long, are used to going out to eat, doing all that stuff on the road. Like for me, I didn't, I'm I don't have anything to compare it to. Like right. I, for my first year, like on the road, like it was it was what I was used to. Like for them, they've they've gotten used to such a different lifestyle on the road that it was tough for them to make that adjustment of of not I spending bet. a ton of time in a locker room, kind of having everybody spaced out. Like in Cleveland, I was in a completely different room i was in an auxiliary locker room i wasn't with all the guys like they have all these different rooms spread out um really yeah it was weird. on your own team yeah um cleveland was weird because it just depends on how much room they have in their lockers cleveland has really big lockers so they can't you have to be spread out so they had to move guys over to different locker rooms and all this stuff um so it was weird it was kind of like for me it was it was it was normal. Like I didn't have anything to compare it to. Yeah. I think, I think it'll be really cool next year being able to do all the the normal things, going out to eat, doing like you're in Chicago. Everyone's like, normally we would go out to eat every single night. Like we'd find a different restaurant and and go kill it. And the guys who are rolling in the cash gonna pick up the bill. And <laughs> but uh, nice. it, it was cool. I mean, it was we all got used to it by the end of the year. What about the playoffs? First year, yeah. First year up, playoff experience. Starting I know the COVID, like the COVID dilemma, kind of puts a damper on the. I would think, yeah, you know, than from what it would normally be like. Yeah, no, the I mean, energy it, levels and stuff. We were lucky we got to host. Um, just we played well enough to host. We ended up losing both the games. So to Houston, I mean, when you're setting up the scenario, we were looking at all the teams like we might have to face, and we're like, hey, Houston, like they got a terrible road record. They're under 500 coming in this might be like the best team for us to face we had the best home record in all all of mlb and sure enough they come in and whoop our butts for two games and go on and play really well over the playoffs do you um, any trash cans 
there was, <laughs> there was like a Facebook group who had started to bring, have everyone in Minneapolis come outside the gates and just bang our trash cans. On <laughs> oh, <there. geez>. um, <laughs> that was funny, but I, they, they're going to get that forever. Like they're yeah. never, they're never going to, going to forget about that. Like, and everyone's going to make sure they, they always remember that. Um, but it was cool. I mean, the environment's definitely different. Like you got, it's not, there wasn't anything changed about the game, but in your head, in your mind, you're, this is playoff baseball. Like and more it was cool. media. Yeah. There was way more media. All this, all the signage around the stadium changes. Like for me, especially, I mean, I started both the games. Like I, it was for me as a rookie, that was my 26th and 27th game or something like getting to do, getting to play in that baseball, that playoff baseball environment right off the bat was, was awesome. Well, my next one is uh, I got to take it back home. So you guys actually did a stint in St. Louis, didn't you? So we were supposed to play like a series, a, a two game. I took a two day trip, um, play two games, but they ended up having all that mess with the coronavirus. Um, they had to lose so many games, so they called us and said, "Hey, do you mind coming in for one day, playing a doubleheader, and then getting out of here?" So we went up there for flew in the night before, spent the night, went to the ballpark, played doubleheader, and headed back home. Wow. Um, it was a pretty sweet, it was a pretty cool place. So like I, I post that picture and like that stadium is awesome. The, the area around it's really cool. We were, our hotels directly across the street from the hotel. Um, they put you at the Hilton? No. Ballpark Hilton? Uh, I don't remember what it's called. It was like, I was looking out my window right at the, like the entrance to the stadium, the home plate. Um, hmm. I'm, not, I'm trying remember. to think of what it is, but we're, we 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 walked the stadium. They don't even have buses offered to us. Yeah. So we just walk over there. Um, it was awesome. Like it was a really cool. It was a really cool stadium. Probably one of the probably second favorite behind Wrigley this year to play at the Way Stadium. Wrigley, that was pretty. Oh man, hey, you can't be those. Like you just can't. <laughs> there's there's something about different. stepping on those a field yeah, like that that you're I, just like, hear you. this is this is cool. Like <laughs> a lot older. It, did you get to meet any of the other the other ball team, or they keep you guys separate? Or they mostly keep us separate. Um, you kind of you you can meet on the field and stuff, but like you can't do anything. You're not supposed to see anybody off the field. You're supposed to go right back to your hotel room and just lock so in there. Weird. It is like so normally weird. you would have, like I said, you go out to dinner. You go out to dinner with like you got a buddy on the other team. You guys can go catch, grab a dinner. You can grab a, a drink, whatever you want to do that night, and then go back to the field the next day. But you just gotta. Right back to the hotel room and lock Ooh. it up for the night. I got a random question for you. So going from collegiate side of things at a mm-hmm. university where you know you had kind of like that in between, like nice things. Mm-hmm. What did what did you feel like was the nicest perk of being so young and being in that big league atmosphere? Was it food? Was it recovery and as a mm-hmm. catcher, yeah. which is important, like uh, attention to your body? Or was it, you know, say the travel and the bed or something? You're right on with the second one. That's probably what it would be. For me, it was just the attention to detail of everything that I would need to get ready for the next day or to prepare my body for that day. Like whatever you need, whether it's food, supplements, stretch, stretching, soft tissue work, a massage, needle. You got everything you can think of. You just felt, you felt you can, so much more relaxed than being on a bus with, right. a, with a person sitting right next to you. Right. Like as a, <laughs> I'm hopping on the, I'm hopping on the plane after I catch a game and they're throwing, they got little firefly things on my legs that are making my legs pulse the whole plane ride for eight hours. And I mean, that's, I feel great the next day I can wake up and I'm, I feel like I didn't catch anything. Yeah. Um, I need to go hang out in the big leagues. Yeah. <laughs> I'd recover. You thought so you much thought the Don Verity recovery room was nice. Mm. Dude, <laughs> You're I only mean, scratching the surface. It's like how many Thera guns they had uh, every time yeah, you yeah, looked in the in the dugouts. At the they had just yeah stacks of, of hyperbolts. Um, it's just everything you need. Like you can shoot a text to a, a trainer and get got help. Do That's this, awesome. do that. I mean, as a rookie, for me, I have got to be the first one in the like the training room. Like I, it's kind of one of the the hierarchy things. Like. If I need treatment, if I need recovery, like get there early and, and get it done. The guys that have played in the big leagues for ten plus years sure. can, can roll in closer to game time and get that stuff done. But yeah. it doesn't matter. You can go in there and, and get ready. I mean, I'm, that's how guys like Yadi has caught 130 games a year for his whole career. He's 36 or whatever. Take care of the body because you can take care of your body just really, really good. It's awesome. We need to up our game on the recovery aspect. Yeah. I don't know what else I could possibly get. 
I mean, there's no hot tub at Don's house. I feel like Don needs a hot tub. <laughs> you got but, contrast baths. You got yeah, you, got, you got dry needling. That's uh, uh But even if I got it, like, who's going to do it? <laughs> yeah, you got it. It's hard to get certified, too. It's state to state. Like, like some states, if they come down to Florida, they some of them can't do it down there. It's, it's weird because you're tossing needles and... In your muscles. I've got the sauna. It's unbelievable. We've got the Normatec pants. We've got the Hypervolt gun. No, no, I mean, no hot tub. I feel like hot tub is like the next level. It was, uh, we I mean, gotta, well, I'm Don's getting has got to have a hot tub. Every day. I mean, <laughs> there was, I mean, the hot, the contrast baths were huge for, for everybody. I mean, it was, you hop in ice every day pretty much after the game. I, I did. A lot of guys didn't. Um, what Donald's do they call that? Kyle? Or yeah, it's like contrast contrast bass. Yeah, yeah like, there's a name for it though. Oh, for is the it, it's the same aspect of the sleeves. It it gets the it flushes your legs, but um, some guys do that every day. So everyone has their their things that they like to do. Some guys don't do anything. Some guys do everything. You'll have like, to have uh, Jeffers over for a recovery party and <laughs> let him evaluate your <laughs> bunch of old your turns, setup. Your setup. <laughs> no more text. I mean, you can't you can't get much better than throwing on the sleeves. Like that's gonna Really, that's going to do the best for your legs. I don't see it like an immediate release from those things, though. I just I feel better the next day. I, yeah, I put them I on every saying. night. Like after I would catch a game, I would throw them on for an hour in bed and then take them off and show up to the field the next day feeling like catch another nine. Like I got to be that was the biggest thing like that you hear as a catcher, like durability as a catcher. Like if you can be durable for your career not get injured, be able to catch 100 plus games, 120 games a year, then that's like where you need to be. Like it's awesome. You need to be reliable for your team to turn to as a catcher. Well, that kind of segues into my into my next thing here is um like off-season training, routine, food, mm-hmm. supplements, that sort of thing. Like especially for you as a catcher, talk about mm-hmm. some of the things that you would do now being in the big leagues, but even back when college days like mm-hmm. So I know some of these kids they definitely don't have the access to some of the things that you have now but i mean there's a lot of things that catchers specifically can do for me training wise i don't do anything i would do i don't do anything super specific to catching um i catch with my with my feet out pretty much a lot so i switched this year to uh to mostly sumo stuff um i was doing a lot of sumo deadlift doing a lot of sumo squat just because that's where my hips work best wide it's when I'm narrow, my hips, I don't really sit like that very often when I'm catching. So trying to get it um, as functional as I could to what I was going to do in the game. Um, and then I just a ton of stretching, a ton of mobility work. Um, I really got in this past off season into the uh, like FRC type of hip workout, like hip stuff, um, just to, to really get into my hips and uh, to work on that mobility range. I was telling, I was telling you earlier, I'm going to start getting into Pilates this off season just to kind of reset my body. What did you call um, that FRC? Functional range conditioning. conditioning. All right, I'm going to write that down. Functional <laughs> range conditioning. Um, it's like really, it's kind of firing at your end ranges of your of your mobility. Um, just to get that, to get your mobility fully. It's, I don't know, I don't, you can probably explain it a lot better than I can. Like, yeah, it's, uh, it's more, so you got static and ballistic stretching. So then you got like functional range conditioning, which is kind of like a mix of the two. And you kind of said it right. I mean, it's pushing yourself into these stretches deeper Mm -hmm. using breathing than you normally would if you just take a deep breath and bend over touch your toes a lot of pails and rails kind of contractions and then lifting and doing different things with your hips to to keep everything healthy in there Um, because stretching is just not going to do it for me i mean i'll get in there and make sure everything's loose and stretched but to really stay healthy i gotta get in there do more than just that yeah push past like the normal right because I sit, I mean, my I sit pretty much as as extended and as as stretched out as you can get during a game. Like nine innings of, of catching, that'll really stress your hips, stress yeah. your knees. Why is a why is an Olympic gymnast flexible? Because they push past the regular norm of mm-hmm. stretching, bending over, touching your toes, doing a split. Every gymnast can do a split, right? One hundred percent, absolutely. Like they should be able to. There shouldn't be a gymnast if you don't. Olympic right, gymnast, right? Well, like you've you've seen like gymnasts when they're learning to do splits, they go beyond like a normal split mm-hmm. where they have like feet elevated in that split. Well, 
FRC is very, very similar. So mm -hmm. if you're saying, okay, I'm going to stretch my hip flexor by just putting my knee on the ground and leaning my hips forward, that's one thing. But like, can you go further? Can you push like into that range of motion, like even deeper and test and then strengthen and, and then yeah. strengthen in that range of motion. That's big mm -hmm. with FRC. You get into that end range and then you try and hold and, and strengthen at that end range to be able to get to that end range easier next time. Yep. Um, and that was, Wait, that so. was always big for me. Maybe that's what I need to add to my arsenal is bring strength in out of retirement and just use him <laughs> as a coach. Don't ask for what you what know. Do you think? You're not ready for. <laughs> he, he, uh, I always bust his balls cause he's always talking about accountability partners and it drives me crazy. <laughs> drives me nuts. So. <laughs> that's um, well, what are your thoughts on 2021, man? I mean, you, you're around all those guys. Has there been any chatter about what they think the next season's going to look like? As of now, we're going full steam ahead, normal year. Um, I think it's going to – a lot of the stuff for for fans in the stands, that's going to be kind of back burner, going to change per city. Um, Luna is trying to get on the show here. She yeah, yeah. wants attention. Um, it's going to change city to city, like whether there's going to be fans or not. I think I think spring training there'll probably be some fans because of Florida. It just depends on I – mean, I don't know if the Yankees, the Mets, they'll have any fans. Like it's going to be so up in the air. But for baseball-wise – we'll have a full year. Um, I mean, we proved this year that if you do do the testing, if you follow the protocols, like you're going to be just fine. Like you just got to, you just got to be accountable for yourself, be for your teammates to, to keep the season going. Um, so as of now, we're full steam ahead for regular spring training, 162. Awesome. Are you ready, Don Verity, to adopt the Minnesota Twins as like a second team? Like, <laughs> is that something you feel like you can? Is that do? a big rival? Is that a the Cardinals uh, yeah, Twins? Feel like is that a rivalry? Like a rivalry is that a rivalry there or anything? I feel like Don should be able to accept them at least rep his, it once in a while under his wing as a as a I, second team. I mean, under no circumstances can I wear any other apparel. Like that just can't happen. I don't know. You got you got to be a you got to I mean, be a Cardinals fan through and through. Mom. You can throw. Yeah, you can put a hat in the corner or something. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. It's baby steps, Ryan. I'm trying. But I can't. You gotta start, start slowly. I'm trying for you. Eventually, we can put a Jeffers jersey somewhere around here. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I'm hanging all that stuff up. I mean, <laughs> memorabilia <laughs> is memorabilia, but just wrapping being, it would just it be in the public is it would just thing. be in the dark corner in the office. <laughs> the one in the closet, <laughs> hanging up. Awesome. Well, man, thank you for taking the time to come in. Congratulations on everything that happened thank this you. year. It was awesome to see it. Um, I appreciate it. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on. It's it's cool to talk about this year it's just it was such a cool crazy year so it was cool to chat about it absolutely all right guys till next time